what it is. You were just in hospital. You were shot. I mean, it's understandable that you might. Be. Yeah, I, it's not just the fact that I was shot and almost died. Although that played a part in it for me and for Sam, but not the biggest part. Oh, what is it? Uh, Sonny stopped by my place today, and uh, we, you know, got to talking about father-son stuff, and then he mentioned Dex Heller. In what context? In the context that other cops, maybe even you, won't believe what Dex has to say about Sonny's business, uh, but not me. Not me, because I would, I would know better. What did you take that to mean? <laughs> It's mean that he doesn't think that we should believe anything that Dex is going to say about his business. Did Sonny ask you to do anything else other than not believe whatever Dex might say? No, not immediately, but uh, it's not going to be the end of it. For Sonny, he's going to come back, and then he's going to ask what Dex said. Assuming you would have access to whatever Dex disclosed. If Sonny asked, would you tell him? Not a chance. But Sonny laying this groundwork like this is, I don't know, it's just this line has is, is gotten really blurry, you know, between what I do as a cop and what I do as a son. And, you know, I was trying to build this wall between certain parts of our lives. You know, when Sonny was on one side and I was on the other side, we could coexist. I, I mean, that's seemed to have been working in the past. Yeah. But, the, you know, the, what you said at, at Chase's bachelor party really kind of hit home for me. And, uh, I have thought about what Dex work in front of the PCPD could mean for the father. Information that he could pass on. And, and I, I hate that that thought crossed my mind. You're being really hard on yourself. I mean, aside from your remarkable recovery just now, you're only human. Yeah, but I'm a cop. Yeah, you're a damn fine one, too. And worrying about something isn't the same as intervening or interfering or sharing intel. No. But to me, it sure feels like a betrayal of everything that this badge stands for. So, it's got to end tonight. stuck in your own dot. Yeah, it's my daughter. I have uh, more than one, so I'm yeah. stuck in my thoughts a lot. <laughs> Man, I just have one, and that one's a full-time job. And a thankless one a lot of times. I know what that's about. <laughs> you didn't have a, an argument with Christina, did you? No, I get along great with Christina. I can't say the same about my ex. Oh nothing worse than a fight with your ex because you loved each other once so they no one will hurt you and exactly where to aim it my ex and i share the same daughter that i was talking about earlier my daughter's uh young so she still likes me <laughs> enjoy that while you can <laughs> but the other thing is that uh i'm bipolar so my ex was instrumental in getting me diagnosed and recovery. Okay, so she's she's not all bad. Well that was that was then and now she's using it against me. Molly and TJ have been nudging Christina about it. Where she eats, where she sleeps, how worked up she gets. Well, surrogacy be can be challenging for everyone involved, even when everyone's being respectful and well-behaved. But all Molly and TJ have to do is watch it and wait, and they are both very bad at it. On the other hand, for the most part, Christina is doing everything a pregnant woman should do. Uh-huh. What's the other lesser part been up to? Thinking that the baby is hers? Well, I've had some experience with surrogacy, just from the legal side. And I know that whoever is carrying the child experiences a wide 